thank you very much. I hope you had a good lunch. And uh, now I'm ready to move on. Um, yes, uh, what about this hackathon that we were talking about? So, first of all, I want to thank like all of the people that made this wonderful event happen and thank you for the organization. I'm really, really overwhelmed of how much power and uh, how much experience of gamification are gathered here in this area right now. Um, so, thank you for having me here. This is my first time here. That's why I want to um, tell you or introduce myself shortly. Uh, my name is Philip Busch, as already mentioned, and I work for GIZ. This is uh, the German company for international cooperation. Okay, what is that? Um, it's International Cooperation for Sustainable Development. So we got over 50 years of experience, um, around 70,000 employees in over 100,000 countries, uh, sorry, 130 <laughs> countries. Um, we work in a variety of areas, such as environment, energy, peace and security and all that. And we work very close together with the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. And uh, right now, I'm doing my PhD in gamification and development cooperation. And um, that's why we decided to do a hackathon <laughs> called Gamified Gamification for Social Good. For those who don't, uh, who don't know what a hackathon is, it's something like a, a marathon for hackers, whatever that means. It's more or less like um, a very demanding <coughs> workshop for programmers. Um, okay, so we decided to do that in Ethiopia, and uh, the event started from, uh, or in May 2015, during the e-learning Africa in Addis Ababa, and um, we invited 28 participants from all over Africa to come to uh, Addis Ababa during the e-learning Africa, and we built five teams, had five facilitators, and our target was very ambitious goal that we wanted to have a working software after four days from scratch. Um, a working software that works with the topic on gamification on, uh, for social good. And uh, we had a presentation for an external jury and uh, the winning team is now invited to come to the online EDUCA in Berlin in December 2015. So we started Really, it's software from scratch to working application in just four days. How did we manage that? Um, we had a pre-workshop. Um, we had an application phase, and, uh, which we distributed over our networks. And then we had like hundreds of uh, <coughs> applications, and we really had to think about who we want to invite and who not, who's, yeah, who's good, uh, a good team player and who can manage to, to bring the software uh, working. And then after we selected the teams, the teams from individuals, not, not, not uh, yeah, we built the teams from individuals and then we introduced them in the first time in an online meeting. So um, just to answer some of the questions and say hello to them. We had this bunch of tasks that you see here. Um, like building a team with strange people that don't know each other, defining problems, finding solutions, write activities, stories, describe your users, all that stuff that you know from gamification, programming the system, debugging it, pitching in just four days. So we decided to do this on the first day. <laughs> and um, all what you see like programming, debugging, testing and all that came from two, day two. Very important when we were in Ethiopia because we, we gathered people from all over Africa that didn't know each other. They came from different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, so we had to build a team very quickly in the first day. Um, that's why we had a team keeper, designer, programmer in the team, and we had to, to shape a team. And perhaps you guys know uh, this team building game that's called Marshmallow Challenge. And within the, the, the Marshmallow Challenge, your team gets a marshmallow and some spaghetti and a bit of tape. And uh, they have five minutes to build the highest tower with that. If you're doing good, it looks like that. But most of the time, 
The teams want too much, and they try to build the tire, uh, the tower, as high as possible. And after five minutes, it breaks, and they got, don't got anything. So of course, it was a metaphor for those four days. Of course, build a high tower, but don't build it too high. Um, we started out then also on the first day with some brainstorming, design thinking processes. Um, we opened their box. We really wanted to, to, to let our participants think out of the box, have some crazy ideas, go for quantity, and really then structure those ideas and cluster them, as you see over there. Um, and then the teams had to decide on which idea they, they, they went for the most promising. Um, it was interrupted by some input sessions that we gave them how they can manage their time frame, how they can uh, manage the process. Of course, always all the people were really concentrated and gave me a full attention. <laughs> well, of course, not always because, as I said before, um, it was very demanding for the people that had really not a lot of sleep. And I know from a few guys that didn't sleep at all during the last night. Um, so, as I said, very demanding. And uh, then they had the team sessions. And in the team sessions, they really had time to work, to work on the process and to, to make their software um, yeah, going forward. But those team sessions were interrupted by some plenary sessions. And those plenary sessions were for introducing to the other teams um, the results or the progression that the teams made so far in their projects. Um, so there's, there were two advantages. One, it was very motivating for the people that they could see how far the other's team already are with their software, so they had to hurry up. And two, the teams got uh, really good feedback from the other participants with a third look on, on their project, and they really could see, okay, this is good, this is bad, try to fix that. Um, we offered them a method that I call Slim Scrum. This is, uh, of course, from Scrum program, uh, Scrum programming, the idea of uh, Scrum programming from the HL software development, where you have a product backlog, and this product backlog just gathers all your tasks that you have to do from scratch onto the working application. So you really, they really get at everything. Divided them into some sprints, and then took a sprint, what is like a working package, and uh, done it. So the first thing were, was that they had to manage their backlog, define a sprint, and then this is the most important step over there. They really had to complete the sprint. So they really had to a protected working area with no disturption uh, from, from another guy that, hey, let us implement this idea or that. No, this was really protected working time. Then you see the result of the sprints, check the results, the, the results are okay, and then you update it to your product backlog and go for the next sprint. So you see the people really had really not a lot, lot of time as you see, and we really put some pressure on them, just keep packing, time pressure, we had some pitch training on the same side, and they really we wanted as much as possible as we could get from them. And uh, yeah, they were really under pressure. And then the big day came. And the big day was the pitching at the African Union um, during the e-learning Africa. And it was really impressive, really impressive, what people, especially the participants, could do with their, when they have really a, a good time pressure, when they got a structured time pressure. It was so impressive that we're kind of proud of it that really all teams managed to do a working application in just four days. And um, then we had the pitching, and of course we gave the jury, an um, external jury, uh, some criteria such as creativity, was it something, a new idea, thinking out of the box, How's the logic and story? Is there usability, functionality? And of course, very important for me as I work in the field of development corporations, the upscaling, the potential impact and upscaling. 
And uh, with those criteria, um, they selected a winner, and we had an awarding ceremony during the e-learning Africa. One team, of course, has won. Um, but I want to show you not just the winner, but just a quick overview over all of the results from this, from this hackathon. There we got the Sega Citizen Builder that uh, tried to train you to be a better citizen in a gamified way. Then we had financial education and microfinance doing it gamified. Be the boss, problem solving, using design thinking. Um, then we had a game focus on entrepreneurship education, which was especially built for children, because there's all, yeah, like always a lack of entrepreneurship education for children. They wanted to fix that. And here we got um, the everyone that was solving tribalism tension. And um, they won, by the way. Um, I want to show you how, how their platform looked like. It was a community-based platform. So um, the community were, was able to upload content to a um, gamified online web platform. <coughs> this platform transferred the information and downloaded it to an uh, offline serious game and converted it into a 3D environment. So the community could experience a different culture from the community. It looks like that. Now there should come a video. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, here you see the web uh, sign in for the web platform, the GameFed web platform. Here you can uh, uh, translate stuff, can say, okay, my culture eats that, my culture uh, hears that music. And the web platform transfers this information given by the community to a 3D environment where you can experience. Uh, it and of course it works with virtual reality as well and very interesting because this video was taken after four days so from scratch from the idea on to to filming to that video it just went four days um, and it worked so well that we decided to do a follow-up uh, and we did yeah a hackathon follow-up where we invited all our international partners to have a, a second look on the applications. And uh, the teams had a second chance to introduce uh, their solutions for them. And uh, yeah, so there was, I can tell you uh, that there was more than one winner afterwards. Okay, what are the outcomes for the participants? We see that for the participants, they learned really like lots of things about gamification. They learned about Scrum programming. They had a pitch training. They could network. They had project management, design thinking, use cases, storytelling, timekeeping, all that in a very short period of time. Very yeah, demanding, by the way. And on the other hand, the Earth got now five great gamified solutions more. Um, yeah, that's uh, about the outcomes. But um, there was one thing, apart from, apart from all that outcomes that I just displayed over there, is that we gathered people from all over Africa with different ethnic backgrounds, with different cultural and religious backgrounds, and they worked closely together in the field of gamification and still are working in the field of gamification together. And uh, my favorite quote uh, comes from uh, one guy from uh, Madagascar. He came to me and said, Philip, yeah, great stuff with all that um, uh, organization and, and, and learning and gamification and all that. But apart from that, the most important thing for me is that I found friends for life. So thank you very much. <laughs>